Welcome to the Reality Revolution. It's a fantastic day. I get to talk to Dan Radio Style. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Dan Radio Style is, has a wonderful channel. Of course, if you've probably listened to mine, you've probably seen his. He talks about everything Neville Goddard and consciousness. And he has that unique radio style that I love so much that sounds like the classic talk radio from back in the day. And so it's like the perfect mix. And you add a, a lot of analysis and to the some of the Neville stuff I've taken you've taken the stuff from Neville and helped me to understand it and apply it in my life and so I was really excited to get a chance to talk to you uh, about your experience with manifestation and consciousness so welcome to the reality revolution Dan man I, I've sh I, it's so awesome to be here first off reality revolution I love the name this is the second you connected with me and one I, I checked out one of your videos but it was the name and just everything, the whole feel when I got to it. So thank you for being one of the people on the right, leading thanks. edge and trying to make a difference and trying to help wake people up in this world. It's, it's awesome. But yeah, I appreciate it. I love doing this work. Neville's uh, an amazing guy. He's a genius who, when you look at what he was saying and then really put it relative to the time he was saying it, right. this guy was so on the edge of what was acceptable. Like it was a cult following at the time, but now through a lot of right. this, the secret and all this other stuff, he, he's become very mainstream and he is, he's brilliant, but he does kind of speak in that old tongue, if you will. Well, but, I, I, I've, as I've explained it and as I've tried to start understanding, I'm still a student of Neville. I don't, I, I do are, not are, claim do, to does be Does that ever expert. stop? Yeah. Yeah, there's so much, but yeah. when I'm thinking about Neville, he's talking to people in, in the 60s and 70s right. that were taught the Bible as kids in their in the 40s and 30s so there's a, it's a it's even more than we can imagine strong biblical teaching which is part of their subconscious understanding of god so he's reaching to those people saying hey all that stuff you learned it still verifies what i'm talking about and that's the brilliance of it. not right? just that but where he was basically punching his elbows out was not only was he trying to keep it in context of the bible but he was also saying Hey, and FYI, the Bible's more symbolic than literal. Right. And that was like, what? Like people, you know what I mean? That was, right. you did not do that. And right. so there's, it, Goddard was amazing. Right now, that's probably listening to us. I'm sure. That is, has the experience with the Bible and said, that's impossible. That part of the Bible, there's no way that could have happened. And they've literally turned off the Bible in their mind because they've seen some discrepancy or contradiction with the Bible. So what's exciting is when you come back to Neville, Neville says, oh, that stuff doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and from a, from a literal standpoint, right. I mean, you're right. There's some kind of absurdities, like, you know, right. two, two people created the entire human race. Like, theoretically, we should all probably have an arm growing out of our forehead based off of the way <laughs> genetics work. Right. So, I mean, it's probably a little different than that. And I think, yes, there had to have been some symbology. So Goddard was really groundbreaking in that regard. And I think does such an amazing job kind of pointing it out, but relating it to something that people could kind of like lean on. You know what I mean? Like a wall right. of a building, like, okay, I'm on my, my religious belief. Talk to me. And, and Goddard yeah. kind of came at him. All right, here's some crazy hocus pocus, but trust me, walk with me and you'll see what happens. And that's always the thing I say to people too, is like, I'd love you to prove me wrong. That's what I want. Like, right. try it. That's all I'm saying. Just give it a try. Pay attention to what you're doing and focusing and thinking and saying, and and you'll start to see patterns. And you know, it's it's not like I need to sell you. I don't have a book. Right. I'm not trying to sell a bridge. It's just an, a beautiful reality that we all get to ex experience. We yeah. we choose this. We either follow other people, other people's leads, or we're leading ourselves. Yeah. One of Neville's saying. Don't you don't have to believe me? Yeah. You can go and test this stuff out. That's what he's telling. Uh, he's not saying, I, uh, you know, listen to me and then, and, and yeah, I'm, yeah, he wasn't, yeah, exactly. He was like, no, just seriously, go try this stuff. I, right, and, yeah, that's just, what's yeah. so great. Uh, and now, it, what, what do you think's the big key? I mean, what do you think? And you're not uh, Goddard studies thus far. What I mean, I've only really heavily got into three of his books, so I'll be honest, I, I'm yeah. not as deep as, as maybe many, but. I don't know, from my standpoint, it really, I mean, they're one, and I'm going to start doing some shows on this and I recommend for you too. And it's just, yeah. I want to probably gonna kind of preface it for both of us right now, maybe, yeah. but his law and promise, which I did the whole, whole book, but mm -hmm. apparently left out the last chapter for whatever reason. I don't know why it must've been an accident. Not sure, right. but that's the key. And from a biography I read of him, 
his whole thing became like at first and early on, it was all about the law. And then he said, then oh, it was no, 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 no. It became right. all about the promise. And yeah. the law and the promise is a, a, a very good chapter, but it's one of those things where he's got, you know, 150 words and he's saying, you know, 5,000 words. Right. And, and it's just, it's like, it's really deep. And so I've been kind of really meditating on that. And I yeah. think that's going to be key because it really is. It's kind of that whole, the, what the promise and what he's talking about in the law of attraction and the, and the consciousness component of it. Right. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's so there's very the powerful. steps for me. My first exposure was the feeling is a secret. It's such an easy and wonderful book to read. And that was before I, I was like, wow. And then I started applying other principles like the secret and reality trans surfing. And all of them had this fundamental concept that f the feeling is a secret behind all of them was this simple fact. And so I kept on coming back to the feeling is a secret. So then the law of assumption, which I, honestly didn't quite get even though i had read a lot was that he's not talking about the law of attraction he's talking about assumption and so it's the the third level is what you're talking about that i'm starting to delve into is the promise uh i just finished the lecture 1260 days he's, he starts going to a point where okay this is he's going even further and uh, some of it you can you can see he's talking about having this this awakening where something came into his head and he's starting to see doves and lights are coming in and and so that is you're right i would love to delve more into that my understanding of the promise as best i understand is that once you have awoken you know now you're this the, the, this powerful spirit with an understanding of your powers during this time and it's almost like you have a responsibility to lovingly imagine for those around you and you don't have to worry about anything. You already know it's for sure in your heart. Is that, is that my better understanding of the promise? I think you're right on track. And okay. I, one of the other components I would add to it, though, it seems oddly kind of off place for our discussion right now, but I would say that most of the masters that have come and visited us have definitely talked about getting ego in control. So it is, yes, when you have all of this knowledge and understanding of how it works and the consciousness and your ability to flow and control that and realizing that when you do get your energy to that place, you become attractive to other people because of how high your vibration is. People start to look up at you like you're something. And right. to be able to manage that responsibly starts to become part of that evolutionary journey as well. Right. And so, yeah, but I think you're completely on track and I would say, yes, cheers. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but the, but I'm interested where he's, you know, he's starting to talk about another idea that is interesting with Neville that I'm trying to wrap my idea around. He, he, he is implying reincarnation. I don't think he really uses the word, but he's implying it. We I haven't seen it yet either, but right. no, I, I feel like he's, he's danced around. He danced, or, he dances around some very esoteric right. things. That but I'm, he's implying that it's not a linear, like, we can wake up in 1940 the next time. Next time we could wake up in the year 3000. It's all a part of each going through these states that we're going through. Am I right with that, with that interpretation or is that, is that wrong? Yes, you can step in at any point. I'm not 100% sure how the consciousness of all that works because I've- It's like simultaneous I, under, time is occurring. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel like there's a part of ourselves that always chooses, chooses to, is always consciousness of a, a conscious of itself, I should say. Like I'm always right. aware of me. And yes, I can choose to go up and down in time and backwards and forwards. And it really just depends on what I'm going there to do and experience. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not to get again, too weird, but many suggest that right now is a very unique time in history. And I think if right. we even look at what's going on in the world right now, you know, France, England, uh, uh, Puerto like Rico, the like, yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going. A lot of people yeah. are rising up and saying, no, we're not standing for this anymore. Yeah. If you look at the way, marketing campaigns and all these things have been in the past they're all based upon how you lack how you need me to make you better and right. it's a changing thing where people are starting to realize huh oh, this is me and so again goddard was part of that awakening process and there's many that suggest and i might be on that same train that mm -hmm. there's something coming i don't know what exactly it there's a lot of like suspicion. yeah and and some suggest a harvest some suggest something interesting this transition but i think we as a as a as a planetary unity as a bunch of people are raising our consciousness and as we do it shifts our whole planet it's it's like people have talked about mass prayer 
And right. that's another example where if you can get a bunch of people to just think the same thing at the same time, that has an enormous amount of power. And it has been documented. It's not talked about a lot because they don't like people to think that, hey, you can, you can affect your own life, man. You don't need me. Yeah. I, and there's something palpable. There's a feeling that something's happening right now. Like that old song, something's happening here. Yeah. Uh, you, I think it, when, as we're watching YouTube videos and we're seeing that everybody else is having this feeling, I, I get that too. Uh, I have an episode, I don't, I don't know, to go beyond where I read about no, oh, no. the talk, law talk. one and people are channeling, talking about moving into higher densities and Dolores Cannon is talking about. Uh, so there's other people kind of verifying that. I don't know how much people can attribute the truth to that, but it feels like there's some authenticity to this idea that we're, we're moving to something bigger. Fortunately, there's this thing called law of confusion that allows people to kind of wake up at their own pace. Their own so no pace. matter what, there's always this ability to go either way. I can right. not believe you or I can believe you. But channeling has been something. I mean, Jane Roberts is one of the big ones, I think, that goes back into what, 73-ish right. and stuff like that. And that really started to take form and take off. And there's a lot of amazing information out there. The that Even if has it's supposedly come from other places. It's actually giving their own information from the channel. Well, yeah, exactly. It doesn't exactly. matter. The information itself from like Seth, like you're mentioning, there's yeah. something to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very powerful stuff. And I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be um, very close to uh, three ladies in particular, probably four, but I wasn't really close to her, but the three ladies, my teacher, and then the, my girlfriend and her mom, like were three of probably the most gifted people <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it was just unreal. Um, and so, yeah, it's just one of those things where you, you will meet people that just are oddly open to it. And I, again, I think yeah. there's a level of purity and an aligning chakras and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's <laughs> things you can do to help, you know, get that process a little more evolved, but ultimately right. all of us can do it. It's just, you know, how well we're just allowing possible. ourselves all that other stuff might be us saying, well, just a little bit longer. Exactly. Sometimes I get well, that interpretation, right? And well, like God, it even mentions in clairvoyance. Uh, I forget which chapter it is, but in your faith is your fortune. Uh -huh. He talks about how uh, basically a lot of people might be able to look at a financial report but not necessarily be able to read it. So yeah, there's a lot of people that might very well see things and not know what they're seeing. Right. And so that's one thing people have asked about thought transmissions and other stuff I talk about too. And it's like, yeah, they might know it's you, they might not. And that's the thing. That's where a lot of us aren't necessarily as attuned or paying attention to uh, what's going on around us as others. And again, I think that all ties into consciousness. I think as we expand our consciousness, you start to become more sensitive, more aware, more yeah. like it is weird. You notice weirder things that you never noticed before. It's yeah. fascinating. So part of my um, being a student is the things I'm having the most difficulty understanding or have made mistakes talking about on the channel. And, and there's some powerful movements inside the Neville Goddard community and you've talked about it on, and you've discussed it, um, as I've noticed. So I want to learn from you. Uh, is two concepts: the okay. idea that everybody is you pushed out, oh. and then the, and then manifesting a specific person, particularly as it relates to Neville. So, uh, I of course I believe that everybody is is me pushed out. I understand the basic concept of it. We're all tied. Well, There's well, a oneness in the yeah. universe. What's your basic concept of it? Let's start uh, there. There's a unity. We're all tied together. The, I, when okay. I, we're when all I, one, the, that the whole thing. The beautiful thing is when I see somebody else, I see myself in them. I, and, and I'm able to relate to them because I see that's me. Uh, there's also everybody I meet, tend to meet is a reflection. Like when I'm talking to you, I was attracted to you because you're talking about the same things as me. So in many ways, you're a reflection of me. And so it just naturally, I'm seeing a reflection of myself when I'm talking to you, because it naturally came that way as me asking you, hey, I want to interview you, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, that, and so I've said before, by the way, there's two ways that the us pushed out thing, uh, at least I, I like to say it that way, but us pushed out is that if I dislike something and it's something that I do, like I'm just mean to people and I cut people off or whatever. And then I, in my real life, I've got people that cut me off. And that's sort of why it keeps this little vicious right. cycle going. So there's times like, I hate people that cut me off. And it's like, wait, do you realize you cut people off too all the time? So there's that side of it. But to your point as well, I really respect this quality in this individual. I think they're really awesome. I really look up to them. You, people don't realize it's because that quality is in right. you. That like a reflection. Yeah. So you see it for sure. So me, like I kind of say, we project on the people, us, 
Right. Um, and I think for sure, I am way on board with the us pushed out being that. I mean, I even talked with this lady named Anya Vivarelli about that mm -hmm. as well. And, and it was, you know, like, yeah, no, totally. We project our fears and all that kind of stuff. But I think when you start to get rid of some of those fears and other things, you start to actually see people for who they are. Right. And I, that's where I'm like, I think every one as you pushed out, I think is confusing to some anyways, is that there's this understanding or thought that they're actually me. And if they're actually me, then I should be able to do whatever I want with myself. And how could that possibly be a bad thing? And I think that they're actually them. Mm -hmm. And, and like I've been talking about lately and it's weird, but it's kind of like, this is my movie. And then everyone that comes into it, I hand them a script and say, all right, here's the part I'd like you to play. Thank you very right. much. And they're like, all right. And so I, they're their own people. They spin back right. out of my life, you know? So I, I, I don't know. That's kind of where I see it. I don't know about you. Well, the, the, I've met people that have taken this to a limit where it become, it may for them, and I don't know, it may for them be a, a handicap. Oh, uh, yes. they're they, they think everybody's you pushed out. So I'm not even real. I'm just in their mind, some aspect of their mind. And I, they have complete and total control and manipulation over me and everybody they meet. And even if that's true, I think that there may be, it may work against them because then, then they're started. Then as we talked about, everything is a reflection. So then they become manipulated. <laughs> I, yes, I agree with that completely. And then the other part of it that you've probably bumped into a lot is like me is people run into somebody or their SP or whatever mm -hmm. starts acting a certain way or starts doing drugs or starts doing something crazy, starts kicking puppies, you know, like all, oh, and then right. they go, well, I know everyone's me pushed out so why is he kicking puppies what's going on inside of me and it's like you're no that's him right. he's a puppy kicker not not you like you should be wondering why you're attracted to people that kick puppies but for okay. now that's not and so and again I'm, I'm being totally hyperbolic for a point like please don't think it's okay to kick puppies i love right puppies. but no yeah so yeah. <laughs> okay so so but but it, it does not mean that i have absolute complete control over you no i it, it, i that, do not that is so. the one thing that maybe people misunderstand and and it gets That's but i start getting into magic and witchcraft right. and, and dark magic starts to go more into the affecting people purposefully right. without their permission mm -hmm. and there's karmic debt to be paid for that i know i'm sounding like a freak saying all this but just versus as I say, leading a horse to water, I can definitely attract and influence a situation where I have a chance to interact with somebody one on one. If I if they're an ex, then I'm going to try to work on healing our anger between each other. And then I'm going to manifest a chance to talk with them again. But it's like, ultimately, you've still got to have that interaction. And you've got to both buy in and shake on it and basically right. say, yes, I want to do this again. That's the thing where people instantly turn off the channel. That's where they instantly unsubscribe sometimes. It's, and I get it. It's not what I want to hear. Right. But they I think it's- want to hear something different. And the thing that is hard for people to understand, and this is really a great, great way to kind of round out this concept, is if I'm in a low environment, low self environment, low self-worth environment, whatever, and I manifest, I, I'm going to use the examples I frequently use because I think it's funny, but I, and I'm at that low level, and I manifest my SP as this tow truck driver. Right. And through a period of time, I start working on myself. I start realizing I deserve better than a tow truck driver. And I, I'd like more. And I start, I go to school. I take classes. I kind of start becoming more. And I start seeing a larger life. Now, all of a sudden, I bump into this stockbroker at some thing I'm at. And now, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I've got this boyfriend. He's a tow truck driver. I want him to be more like this guy. But the right. fact of the matter is, is when you were down low, that's what you were attracted to. That's yeah. what you attracted. That's exactly. what he was vibrating at. Mm -hmm. You've changed yourself and now you're vibrating at a different level and you can't make that person climb the ladder. You can be a reason they do. That does happen. But that's right. where it starts to get tough is you can't force people to join you if you've evolved. And that unfortunately or fortunately really, as you start working through a lot of this law of attraction stuff, you really start to take ownership of your thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. and it actually does evolve you energetically and you will notice right. differences. So the, the, the thing that is interesting that Neville talks about is imagining for others. 
And he has some beautiful stories where he's imagined helping people find lost items or find money. And, and, you know, that's a lot of his discussion. So people may take that and think, Oh, I can, I can imagine bad things for my boss. And so I, I've, I had somebody the other day that was like, I really don't like my boss and I want to imagine something terrible happening for him. And, and I was like, if you do that, you're yeah. going to imagine something terrible happening for yourself. Yeah. Because if you are him pushed out, you're going to imagine it through yourself first. And so I would be really careful about imagining bad things for other people. Oh, that's where you like double foot slam the brake pedal in the car. You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I can't stop fast enough. Oh, right. no. oh yeah. goodness. Yeah. I, I agree with you hundred percent. That is, uh, it is a dangerous way to go about things. Those things are reflected back on yourself. And, mm-hmm. and oftentimes it is some of those people that don't realize, I mean, I, it's something I've taught is try to imagine the best outcome. If you've literally got a boss and you, they really have to go, cause there's no way you can find a different job, right? If that is how it has to be, then find something awesome that they get to move on to right. move their life in a direction that they're going to be fond of. And believe it or not, you might actually see it happen. But yeah, wishing horrible things on people, right. they're going to get that energy and be like, yeah, no, I don't want that, right? right? That thought pops into their head and they're like, no, I'm not right. going to do that. I have this theory. There's an energetic exchange. If I imagine lovingly for somebody, it's like a part of them knows I did it. Oh, even for sure. If they don't, even if they don't end up having that, what I imagined for them, it's like there's a part of them that says, thanks, man. I can see that you imagined for me and I'm more interested in talking to you. I noticed there's an energetic exchange on another level where I have a closer connection to them. And and when somebody is imagined lovingly for me, I can feel it too. And I feel a bond or connection. Does that, is it, am I getting to something? Does that make sense? Yeah, I I think totally. Let me ask you this. Have you ever, ever, ever been thinking about someone and then suddenly you get a phone call from them or you suddenly get a text from them? It's happened yeah. a bunch of times, I bet, right. hasn't it? Absolutely. So that proves the energy connection. I call it thought transmissions, but ultimately it proves it. Right. And so one thing that's hard for people is they think that our thoughts are secret and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> our they're thoughts not. are broadcast to everybody. Right. And that freaks some people out. That I mean, it, truly, they're like, yeah. oh. and it's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Everybody's cool with everybody's thoughts. Trust me, we all have some crazy thoughts. Trust me. And, How much and, of our thoughts are our own thoughts? How many times are we getting thoughts that are actually somebody else's thoughts? And we just think that they're our own thoughts, right? I Well, so you bring up a good thing. There's been times for sure where I have come up with what I thought was a good idea. And then maybe like a day or two later, I'm seeing a Saturday Night Live episode that's doing this crazy thing, but no one else is talking about it. And I know I didn't come up with it first. It's that thing like, oh, that was my idea. It's like, no, I think there were little spikes where a lot of people that are sensitive to certain things, whatever it might be, pick mm-hmm. up that frequency and harmony and suddenly they're aware of that thought. I do think there's what they call, it's what they call the infinite intelligence. It's right. the thing that knows everything. Everything is known. There's no original thought that any one right. of us are going to have that's not been had to some degree, but it's our ability to tap into that that becomes right. essential. And so, yeah, my thought, someone else's thought doesn't really matter. Right. Uh, well, what like, you're saying is true. I, I'm, I'm more and more, when I have a really cool unique thought i'm starting to think you know there's about 30 or 40 people that probably had the same thought i need to go and take advantage and take action on this thought it's kind of motivated me to think this is a part of the group consciousness now and we'll see if somebody can take this idea and move it to the next level that what you're saying kind of verifies that a little bit one thing it's funny too that some people and this is stuff i've read through all sorts of crazy materials and i don't know if you've ever taken any sorts of science but just to use a great example uh like kinetic energy right if i remember correctly Mm -hmm. it's like mv squared you square the velocity when it comes to actually these thoughts and feelings like supposedly the number of people that have it kind of almost like squares or has that same similar kind of effect on the overall energy of that concept so to your point like if you can help get a lot of people kind of feeling and thinking in a similar way mm-hmm. you literally can move mountains it's yeah a, like you said in the episode where you were referencing art bell's experiment yeah where a crazy. big group of people it freaked him out to too. storm right yeah it freaked him out because it was so horrendous what ended up happening afterwards they're like i was a success and a failure all in this like and i if i remember correctly his big thing was 
yeah, sometimes nature needs to do what nature needs to do and we shouldn't get in the way. We shouldn't get in the way. There might be something to that. But we can create group consciousness through, through our YouTube channels, which is exciting. You know, even if 100 people watch a video, it's exciting that 100 people watch a video and we can raise their awareness and maybe that'll move them towards what we're talking about. That's what is so exciting when we do this. Well, know? one thing that I think might be fun, especially with your kind of concept of channel and my kind of concept of channel and maybe some others if we, if we know any. I, yeah. I certainly know someone that might be fun to join, but there are ways to do, uh, I believe, like we could do a meeting like we're doing right here and actually all of us simultaneously on broadcast Zoom. on we our could, live could channels yeah. and do a live, you do a live on yours, I'm doing a live on mine, you know, and that way all of our little individual audiences and we're brought together at the exact same time and we could do some pretty cool stuff. I think and, we should, really we help should figure out a way to do that. Oh, absolutely. This I've played with it a little bit and I, and I know, I know you can do it. And, and the right. best way, if you want to practice and not to get too off, but is if you can uh, mess with the video in private, you can do live streamings to private. And so no one has to see it. And it, yeah, you can test a lot of stuff, but yeah, ultimately that would be awesome to do. Get a lot of people yeah. on the same page I and agree. see if we can like try to affect a lot of people. And one other thing, and I'm bringing it up now because this is something I'm going to, I was talking about and I think it might work for the same concept, but mm -hmm. I wanted to do a thing basically under this uh, called prepare a place and we prepare a place in space and time, you know, and the mm -hmm. one I'm planning on doing is June 6th. And then okay. I'm going to have a thing where, you know, people can communicate or we can do a live show or however I want to, you know, interact it that way. But mm -hmm. it's a place to come in. And since we're planning up and preparing a place, it's like, where's your manifestation going to be? And I want people to come and share their success stories for where they're at, at this place. Yes. And it's like a bunch of people preparing. You can six saying, oh, this is what happened to me. Yeah. And they yep. share. And that's the thing. And then we come I in and it. we actually do a live show at that date and time and right. get people to come in and share. And maybe they share them with their emails and we have, make sure all the people's emails that we're going to read are there. Right. And then they can chime in. And so again, a whole lot of fun interacting stuff that we can do to get a lot of people on the same page. I'm so time. excited. I think this is, we've come upon something with the combination of our channels and everybody yeah. that's listening and in any other YouTubers, we could get something together like a, a reality revolution of some kind. Absolutely. And I, yeah, and I agree. And, 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 and we can do it radio style, you know we what I mean? Do it radio and style, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, and one thing that is kind of a benefit, you and I actually live very close to each other yes. geographically. So we might even be able to do some stuff in person together, Absolutely. which could make it very fun as well. Absolutely. So maybe we do some sort of weird dual stream, at the yeah. same time and just have a couple cameras piping. Sounds in. great. And yeah, I think it'd be a blast. We should awesome. definitely do that. Yeah. So let's talk about the specific person. At some point yep. in time, yep. I had a video where I, uh, you know, I said, hey, Neville's talking about how the, the perfect state of marriage. And I evoked an angry backlash and people would put comments, hey, he doesn't believe in the specific person as if I had, you know, destroyed the, their, their, their world. And, and I was like, no, I'm still a student. And, and I know you can manifest a specific person. I've seen it. I've had experiences in my life. I'm talking, I want first, we'll talk about it two aspects of it. First, I want to talk about Neville. Clearly, Neville has an association. People that talk about this specific person are also incredibly interested in Neville as if Neville was teaching that. Um, can, so I want to talk about that. Then I want to talk about, can we manifest a specific person? So those are the two things I want to talk with you. You've talked about it a little bit on some, in some interviews and some other shows. And so, I mean, we all want to feel loved. And you've talked about some examples in your relationship. We all want to have, find that love. Uh, you know, and, and in my experience, as you know, people will start contacting you when you do a, uh, have a channel like this. And, and the most popular, I need to help, please help me find my specific person. I want to help them. And my first response is, I want to help them. Um, so first of all, let's talk about Neville is, is, is your belief that Neville is saying you can manifest a specific person by using his method. I, so that is definitely a filter that I've applied to his readings, at least as far as trying to find it. Like anytime that pops up in his literature, I'm like, I want it to jump out like right. a highlighter. Um, I've not seen that. It's kind of like the us pushed out thing. He actually says everything, everything. is you pushed out, not everyone. Right. So that's a, again, a misquote. I'm hoping to find it again. I've said the same thing about everyone as you pushed out. I'm like, please share with me where the yeah. quote is. Cause I want to see it in writing or hear him say it. And everyone keeps sharing stuff with me and talks about everything. And I'm like, I, that's what I've been saying. Right. Um, so one thing that people tend to relate when they talk about the manifesting a specific person is 
him and the ex-wife thing where he got a divorce, right. she got a divorce, they ended up together. And I'm like, well, yeah, they both wanted to be with each other and they both were in bad marriages. That's like, so not, okay. Not, not like rocket science there. I mean, that happens every right. day without necessarily using law of attraction. But what I do think we do is we can manifest an attractive energy to one, stand out in someone's mind to bring us into geographic location uh, three, be able to set up a situation where you can further a relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, I think a lot of people, and I don't know why some of it's whatever the way life is today with technology, but I think some people don't quite understand that relationships do evolve through conversations, hanging out. Like it takes right. time. It's not like you just like somebody on Instagram and you see a picture and we're together now that, I mean, it's really not how relationships work. So I think mm -hmm. there's a false kind of understanding there. I think we sometimes, yeah, I, I feel like I'm losing my train of thought on that. No, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. So uh, from my interpretation so far, and I'm still going through all of his books and um, literature, uh, he, there's the lecture on power. And he talks about meeting his ex-wife and how she how would feel his ring and think of his name. There's the next lecture on brazen impudence, which he's talking about more of that past relationship. He was already with her. And he just really wanted to marry her. Yeah. It's more about the marriage part. Uh, so I, and I, I've had personal experiences in the past where I've been able to connect with people on a very right. powerful level and through some circumstances, it's not been able to evolve through sometimes others. It's like, Ooh, I don't want it to evolve. And that, so again, there's a whole slew, but yeah, you can attract people you can towards attract. you for yes. sure. Can you make them do things? No, I do. I frequently say, and I know it frustrates a lot of people, but you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them. Perfect drink, example. And you can't. So if I really want to meet Sharon Stone, if I really focus yeah. on it a lot, there's a you good could totally meet her. In her vicinity. It For sure. Necessarily mean you I'm might even get to shake her, her hand. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like yeah. you could literally meet her, but the she's not necessarily going to go, dude, I got to have you now. Bam. <laughs> right. Or, right. or do that classic scene that we're all very fond of. So, right. Yeah. So the interesting thing though, is if I uh, start imagining for somebody like Sharon Stone, I have this incredible success rate. Like I will meet somebody that is like Sharon Stone or better and it's the same vibrational and my chances are, are better th that we, we will have an interaction that's positive. I don't know. It, it, I, well, I think everything is an experiment when we talk about stuff like this a little bit. I, I do. And I find, I find uh, oftentimes there is a level of frustration to people because they, I've been through breakups. All right. I, I would yeah. honestly say I've probably been in love with, um, with my fifth time. Right. right. And, you know, I'm, I've been in love. I, I released, I think was probably 13 or 14. Right. So, you know, I've done this a few times, right. every single time I've ever broken up in a relationship, I wanted that person back more than yeah. life itself. And I would have sold my soul to the devil to have that. And me too. So I, I, I would, if a, if a magician came along and said, you know, here's a love spell and it would cost you 20,000. Yeah. I would have okay. done it. I yeah, would have robbed a liquor store. Right and, check. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And ultimately it ends up not happening. And that's part of going through the stages of grief is the bargaining. Right. And you go through that right. whole part. And unfortunately there is a lot of pain that's experienced. This was something I was explaining to my, my girlfriend because she's not had to go through stuff like this. And it's like, but when I've met other people and fallen in love again, it was different. And I want to say broader and larger because mm -hmm. my understanding of love had grown. Yes. And so it was an interesting evolution. So unfortunately, yes, I do get how sometimes people want a specific person, but to your point, and I agree with you completely, it's the ideology of that person that I really want, or it's someone right. just like that person, but maybe the parts of them that aren't working like right now, like they don't text you back right now. Right. So maybe this version that's like them also texts, you know, me back or does whatever. Right. And I think that's where you, people could have what they want right now, but because they're saying universe, it has to happen this way only. No other way right. will I accept what I want is except through this. And it becomes a very limiting way to manifest. And that is why some people have a challenge manifesting a specific person because maybe that part of their life, that path is done or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they should be open to 
a new experience. And well, the and, funny thing is, didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're, I feel like you're saving me. I feel like I'm drowning. <laughs> the funny thing <laughs> is, uh, the elephant in the room is, uh, I'll, I'll be talking to some people and um, they have there's, never there's, talked there's, to the specific person. It's is like, there an oh, elephant behind me? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Sorry. But uh, like, sometimes you just need to give them a call. Like I'll talk to somebody and they're doing all this work and trying to manifest a specific person and they, and they know them. And all it is, is just a fear of just going up and shaking their hand and saying, Hey, let's go to dinner sometime. Like they're, they're separating themselves from the most important part, which is they need to just go introduce themselves. There's no magic involved. Or I think there's some people that literally are trying to manifest someone they like, just fantasizing about them incessantly. Right. And then finally walking up to them and going, you have to be my girlfriend. And they're going to be like, awesome. They want no the way that's in happening them. in real life, dude. Cause you're ending up in jail. The times you do that like that. I mean, again, it's just such a crazy it's not how relationships happen. It's not how friendships right. happen. It's not how people interact with each other. I know we've got this weird, like I post a picture and I've within 115 minutes, I've got thousands of likes or whatever, or I post a video and within, you know, an hour and a half, there's, mm -hmm. you know, thousands of watches. Like it's, it's not like that when it comes to human beings, it's human time. You sit and watch sunsets together. You burn candles and, and they slowly go down and you wait for the pizza guy to show up while you got the movie on. Like their relationships happen in human yes. time. And that's what's so awesome about them. It's not right. the, I want to just get straight to marriage. It's like, uh-uh, I want to have, I want to have a relationship or, or the best analogy I think I can come up with though. I, I you might have kids. I don't, but is, mm -hmm. is taking a child, having a, a child, like I want to have a baby. Right. And the second they're like three months old, immediately making them 18. Like yeah, perfect. Yes. You would miss perfect. everything. You're missing all the good parts. Oh my God. The things that you're going to remember for the right. rest of your life. Didn't I just rushed through it? No, mm -hmm. it's the journey with your child as they slip and fall, as they say their first words, as they just all right. the crazy stuff. That's part of that experience. And right. people want to rush to the end end, but it's the race. I will say this, and this is, I'm teasing and this I'm, I'm doing a video on, but at least I'm getting credit for saying it now. The law of the promise, how I see it, not mm -hmm. to go back totally, but I think it's uh, germane. The law to me is like the speed limit, right? It's the rules. This is how it works. Right. The promise to me is the journey. That's yes. what I feel like the promise was. If you do the law, if you follow the law, if you understand how the law works, you will experience the journey. That's the promise. Yes. I promise okay. you will have your desire. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think, Neville spent the rest of his life. And I really want to know what happened. I don't know how well you know him either, yeah. but like 72, right? He died. He was doing speeches and writing books. Right up into the end. Yeah. So I'm so, excited to talk to Mitch Horowitz, who's a historian, who's kind of looked into that. And I want to know too, I want to know what's happening during that end period with Neville and what other interactions and what he was like, because I really want to know there's a part of me that wants to know what was going on. Did he that. find out he got sick? Did he just drop? Did right, he, I, mean, I want to know. Did he yeah. just say, hey, I'm ready to go? Yeah, Did, check out. Some, like, you, died wanna... in three days, which would be rad. I mean, that would, would you be, know, like, oh, yeah. right? If, if I can go that way, I totally want to too. That'd be right. awesome. Like, yeah, no, I think, uh, he I think Friday next week, I'm going to go. It's coming. Yeah. There's, there, he is saying he knows it's coming. That That's why I, people get a little like, uh, you know, they want to know all the specifics, but it's like, I know he was into esoteric stuff. I can tell by he the was. way he writes, by the way he shifts the audience, by the way he's trying to move people. And people are like, well, by, by what? And I'm like, one is teacher, Abdullah or whatever. But what right. books did he read? I'm not 100% sure, but like for me and you, you talked about it too. Mm -hmm. Jane Roberts was a weirdly book that kind of stepped me in that. And then there's all sorts of other stuff that kind of, right. but again, it's like different for all of us but ultimately you end up getting into some of that deeper material and really learning some interesting things yeah. about humans and souls. Yeah. And the life. You get the impression that Neville was uh, just loved esoteric literature and Gnosticism, anything, you know, he's reading all that. I desperately want to know more about Abdullah. Yeah, I too. really do. Uh, yeah. The question I've had come up in a couple of interviews there's a tiny chance that Abdullah didn't exist. There's a tiny chance that Abdullah was, he used him as a method of his teaching. Uh, some, there may be a picture of him on the internet. Um, you know, Mitch Horowitz has a recent book where he's, he's thinking about this possibility. Like maybe, uh, I, I think he's probably real the way he talked about him, but if he wasn't, it's, that would be cool too. If he Let was. Me ask you, have you read Dan Millman by chance? 
I have the journey, the, the warriors, the way of the peace warriors. So way Socrates uh-huh. was supposedly real. Cause he wrote a follow-up book, which is amazing by the way, but, right. uh, but that being said, it's kind of similar. Cause there's, um, you know, it could have been sort of a somewhat. Or even Carlos Castaneda do. with Don yeah. Juan Matus. This yes. mystery, it's, a, it's a popular thing in literature to create as a way of explaining a spiritual understanding to, by creating a mentor. It could be true or not. Well, but, and to give it realness. I think that's the other side of it. By perceiving it as an actual person, it's not mm-hmm. nearly as crazy as saying, hey, so I used to talk to this voice in my head and I learned right. some neat stuff. You know, it's like, ah, okay, let's try to market that a little differently. Right. So, I, Even I with people that channel, sometimes when they're saying somebody else is saying this, then you tend to listen. If I'm saying it, oh, you're just some dude. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's, well, you a, know. it adds credibility to it. I, I have no problem with it. I'm listening to the message itself and I'm feeling my own resonance with what is actually being said. And that's what matters. And that yeah. truly, that's the takeaway. And I agree with you 100%. Again, the law of confusion exists for a very solid reason. And yes, mm-hmm. what's your takeaway? You got nothing to lose by listening to someone's thoughts that might sound crazy. I right. mean, I, I'll, I don't want to get into that because it actually upsets people. But there's some thoughts out there uh, that people are having right now about the way things are and that are a little outlandish, but whatever. Like, you know, I'll, I'll, let's entertain them. Let's see what you got to say. But that doesn't mean I got to believe them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you kind of mentioned a little bit about the multiverse in one of your videos. Uh, something I'm fascinated with, and I, I tend to think that Neville is exploring this in Out of This World uh not necessarily specifically but that the, when he we're, we're talking about assumption these are and he's saying everything's already created I mean, he's kind of saying when you're assumption you're assuming a state a reality that's already there you're just moving yourself into that that's kind of may, maybe how i'm working he's not going to go and explain his concept of physics to these audiences back then well yeah one he's you're going to lose very simple everybody way. Yeah, you're going to lose there. Yeah. Well, I mean, the concept of quantum and all these different things, right? I mean, you right. could lose people in some of this crazy newfound science, but ultimately there's a lot of interesting experiments that have been done that indicate there's more power to this esoteric stuff than I think people want to lend credit to. Right. And again, you, you have to tap dance around it ultimately because some people can be very sensitive about what they're, you know, you, you push them too far too quickly and they get very, very right. upset. And so it's a nudging and a gentle awakening. And it's, it's right. a beautiful thing. It really is. At first, it is a little scary. I, I feel bad for the people that haven't really awoken yet at all. Because yes. I do remember when that happened to me. And there was a lot of anger. Like, I felt like I'd been kind of betrayed and lied to. And, and then eventually, you're like, okay, but now I realize I own this. I control this. This is, and I can do something about it. And that was really a big shift for me where I yeah. finally felt like I started living life for the first time. Rather it's than very common dead. what you just said. I think it leads to some loneliness. People, people withdraw a little bit when well, they have that Well, I think awakening. it's your circle at the time too, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm going way against the conventionality and the circle is still very much of that normal. And I'm now kind of poo-pooing on their world. And so, yeah, you kind of get a little bit rejected or shunned even amongst your yeah. closest friends. And it is, it's a tough transition. But ultimately what you find and, and how it plays out is once you kind of walk through that door alone, uh, there's a whole bunch of friends waiting for you on the yeah. other side. And that's kind of the cool part about this. Well, my first videos, I was afraid to say the word God. I would, I would kick around it and I would use the universe. I didn't want to, I wanted my message to be heard, but I didn't want to push people away because I knew because of myself, if I heard that word, I'm going to turn it to the, I'm going to go to the next one because, um, and so Neville's just like, Hey, this is it. He's going to, he, he, and so I'm, as I'm reading it, I'm starting to con- almost become the state of Neville. Uh, where it's okay to say that stuff. The, the interesting, um, is, is there a state of Neville? I, 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 when I'm reading his lectures, I'm finding, you know, uh, beyond all these other things, I believe there's kind of a, it's like this teacher of the awakening state. And I'm finding as I, as I read the lectures, I'm entering the state of Neville a little bit. He talks about all these other states. I think that's tapping into the, the as we talked about that infinite intelligence, the idea, yeah. the concept that I feel like each chapter he wrote, this is kind of where I'm at, at least anyway, with Neville. Yeah. I feel like, and it's kind of like us, and I think you and I can relate to this for sure. Yeah. But I feel like each chapter is like, he woke up one morning and said, ah, here's sort of a metaphor I can use to describe how this right. works. And I feel like that's what you and I like to do. We try to make videos on expanding consciousness, on different techniques. On, right. But ultimately, it's all about taking the reins of our lives. Ultimately, to simplify right. it greatly, like, Take the reins of your own life and you can do whatever you'd like. Done. Do Hello. Like. 
turn the video off. That's all you need to hear. Right. Like, I mean, right. but here we are daily trying to come up with here. He was selling books here. He was right. creating a chapter a day probably when he was writing, or maybe he had a couple cool ideas that he jotted down on a napkin while he was down at the, right. I don't know what a fast food place would have been in the fifties. There probably was no such thing. The diner was some diner, right? Yeah, the diner. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask, it's always fun to ask somebody that's delved into this. Have you have personal examples of you of the law of assumption or things happening and coming into your life i know you've talked about it in other videos but we can share it here yeah. um sometimes people just need to hear that a, a, a story of how you when you started to apply this you saw and it seemed like a miracle at the time like you you started it and wow this stuff works do you understand so, my question yeah i do i mean i'm going to use the radio only because it, it just serves as such a great example in a lot of ways and it really mm -hmm. was before i feel like i overcomplicated the understanding of law of attraction by studying the law of attraction because honestly it almost it's like, i don't know if you've ever golfed but in a golf swing there's about a thousand things you can do yes, wrong it, to hit it, the ball wrong and there's only one way to swing the club perfectly and geez if you think about any of that stuff while you're going into it you're going to jack the shot I feel like kind of law of attraction is the same way. Like yes. a lot of us think way too much about it. But back when I truly understood that it was all about holding a vision and just understanding that this is going to happen, period. Mm -hmm. That is law of assumption without a doubt in its finest form. I was doing radio at small markets and all this, wanted to get to a better station, didn't really mm -hmm. even have some, any good equipment available, available to me to be able to really make a better demo. But I still had the demo I used to get out there. Ultimately, my girlfriend worked at a playhouse that happened to have a pretty significant bit of costumes that they'd accumulated over the years. So they mm -hmm. had a costume shop. Well, ironically, their afternoon DJ at the station I ended up at happened to contact her and say, hey, we're doing this can-can awareness thing that we're trying to raise money for uh, people. And we wanted to dress up. There's three of us guys. We wanted to dress up in can-can costumes. Do you happen to have can-can costumes that we could rent from you? Right. And she said, well, my boyfriend happens to want to be a DJ with you guys. I'll let you have them for free or I'll donate them for free if you take your demo to your boss. And they said, okay, done. So I yeah. literally manifested my connection, my one-on-one, -on -one, my now he knows who I am. And then I literally contacted and left the guy a message every day for three months, every single day. I mm -hmm. called him and said, so just contact and yeah, I'm just not sure when you're ready to start, but I know that job's mine. Anyway, looking forward to hearing from you. Literally like three times he answered, you know, just let me through and I'd talk to him. But yeah, ultimately I decided that was my job. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it. And I did. Right. And awesome. I had people tell me, no, I had people tell me you're crazy. I had people mm -hmm. tell me why I didn't listen right. to it. I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't see it. I didn't see the possibility of it. People say, well, how do you ignore it? It's like, I, I only looked that's at what I was going I to do. How do you ignore? That's the biggest thing that people are learning. I, I talk to people in small towns or terrible countries uh, that, that are looking at their environment and, and they see this reality they don't want to be in. And it's the biggest learning experience for us is how do we ignore this reality around us? to move into the state that we really want. It's the hard, I think it's a big part of our learning process in this. You know? Well, that's why I think one of, the, one of the mistakes that many, many people make is they, they kind of have such a uh, destiny, destination specific thought mm -hmm. that until that destination's reached, they don't consider themselves successful. If they've exactly. got a destination that's 100 steps, and I've mm -hmm. taken 15 steps towards it. A lot of people say, I'm still not successful. And right. other people would say, dude, you've taken 15 steps. You're 15% of the way there. Right. And it's the difference in seeing things. And I think that's the difference. When I was going for a big radio job or a better radio job or, you know, make something of myself in that, the five years I didn't have the job, I never went, I'm never going to get the job or it's not ever going to happen. It was always a, it's going to happen. I know people get really hung up on the, it's all happened already right now. And yes, I knew there was a radio job where I was doing it. I would imagine it. I could see myself doing mm -hmm. it. I knew there was a right now version of it. I just didn't know what stepping stones to hop on to get to there. And again, I think that's the other thing that's really hard for people is dealing with the fact that if I plant a seed in the soil, 
it takes days to grow. It takes days before I see anything pop out of the seed. And then it can take a long time for that thing to gestate far enough to be interesting yeah. or useful. And people don't want that. They right. want to put the seed in the thing and they want a tree tomorrow. And wow, we could really solve a lot of problems in our planet if we could do that. But ultimately, forests take years and years to grow. Right. Like I was listening to Sadhguru the other day and he was saying, like you don't manifest the flower, you manifest the soil and the manure and the water that goes into the, the flower. The flower is just a result that comes after. And that's what manifesting yes. is. You just, in a nutshell, that is what it manifesting really is. is. We mm -hmm. plant the seed, we create the place for it to grow. We do all of that. The, the consciousness is the love and the nourishment. It's the energy that allows it to grow. Right. And it will grow. It does grow. You don't keep looking at the soil tomorrow morning. I did a video recently where I look out there tomorrow morning, I'm like this seed's broken. It didn't work. <laughs> right. It's, it's like, not going to magically just appear. No. The flower's not going to, you're not going to wake up and the flower's going to be there. Mm. And people think when we, they hear these teachings, they're going to wake up and the flower's going to be there. Why didn't it show when I woke up? The flower wasn't there. Can, can you imagine how pissed these people must be with that plant that takes seven years to bloom, right? It <laughs> right. blooms every seven years. They're like, this is ridiculous, man. I don't have this kind of time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I think I'm, that patience is a part built into this wonderful process and we're supposed to go through it. And that's, what's so fun. It's and the experience of it. it. It's like raising a child. It's all those analogies and people, the best approach in my mind, at least the thing that helped me really shift towards a more positive experience was by acknowledging that it's in process and getting away from this thinking of I'm not successful until I have the thing that I'm chasing towards. Like mm -hmm. I'm heading towards it. And as for me, income, and I'm sure you can relate like of course. income, like when I came back from Tennessee and basically started my whole life over, you know, I started pretty low and I've come a long way and I'm continuing to go. And it's mm -hmm. a process. Am I pissed that I'm not a billionaire right now? No. I'm heading there though. And that's the thing. Right. It's the experience. It's the, that's part of the fun. Like when you're surfing and you're out here in the West coast, I mean, oh, longboarding yeah. in San Elf, I've done it before and it's a pain to paddle out there, but I'll tell you what, when you finally hop on that wave and just let it take you, it is one of the greatest feelings I have ever experienced yes. in life. And that is just letting the flow take you. It's sometimes you need to build up the right speed yep. to get on that wave. Yep. Yeah, right? and that's and, and that's the work. Yeah, that awesome analogy. Wonderfully uh -huh. said. Wonderfully and you might said. get knocked off, but it's okay because you can go right back. back. There's up. another wave that's coming. Turn back around, paddle I just back think out. Surfing yep. is such a huge, perfect metaphor for life, and I agree with that. Especially 100%. for well, for people like us that are like surfs up, dude. You know, I mean, <laughs> Californians for sure. But yeah, exactly. And it really is. It's allowing it to happen. It's okay. a beautiful seed that you've planted. It is a tree inside the faith of a mustard seed. Like it's a mustard tree inside that seed. It truly, truly is. Right. Let it grow, Let it nourish grow. it, love it, believe in it, know that it's happening and don't constantly keep digging it out saying this seed's broken and throwing it back down right. and planting another seed and starting over again. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, well you can start the clock over now. You just threw the other seed out. <laughs> exactly. Well said. I love it. I, I really feel like so far we're, we're, learning this and bouncing it. It's so amazing. You're going through the same things that, that I am. I really want to know as somebody uh, it's, I guess it goes back to my old NLP days. I like to model people that are successful. And so you've been and acquired this information. I want to model you. I want to do the Dan radio style modeling. So when you, when you wake up in the morning, do you have a meditation? When you go to sleep, do you have a meditation? What do you do th during the day? What's your habits and rituals? If I wanted to, to take the state of Dan Radio style, what, is, what have you kind of perfected that works for you? I woke up, got out of bed, I dragged a comb across my head, went downstairs and had a cup. Uh, honestly, I, I, um, I wake up every day looking forward to what is before me? Uh, I know that every day stuff is going to show itself towards my dream. I wake up literally like excited. I'm like, it's kind of like waking up and looking at a crystal clear blue sky and just being like, what a beautiful day. I'm glad I'm alive. Like it's a really mm -hmm. exciting thing. I start off with a nice little meditation. I'll be honest. I don't usually do more than five minutes. It's just right. enough to kind of get chill and calm. I, these people are like, I do an hour meditation and then I tie a chi for 26 days. You know, it's like, I can't, I don't have that kind of time. I got too much Everybody's stuff going on in my world. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah and and if you and if you can good on you that's probably awesome like you could right. probably you know meditate under a waterfall and be fine like i probably can't right. um but that being said yeah i i just work towards it i i've got ideas and directions on where i'd like to go mm-hmm. got uh yeah just taking steps in that uh, general direction i um I honestly think the hardest part's figuring out what it is in life we want. I mean, especially for me, I've been a service industry type person for mm-hmm. so much of my life that it took a lot of deprogramming to think a little bit more about myself. I mean, again, YouTube and all that, I love helping people. That's why I do yeah. it. But at the same time, it's like I'm starting to appreciate the fact that it's okay to want to have nicer things in my life. It's okay to mm-hmm. want to be a little more wealthy. It's okay to want to have more success. And, and it's just part of the experience of being here. So I, 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 yeah, it's, it's again, kind of, you were talking about earlier. It says, I think as we evolve in our understanding and start to get that modicum of power, it's important to use it as wisely as we can. And, and, you know, just mm-hmm. like you, I make mistakes too. I, yeah. I don't plan on stop making mistakes anytime soon. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure I'm going to keep doing that probably well into my, well into my life. So I, I try to learn from them. And I think that's the right. important part. And I, go through life fearless and afraid and unafraid because it's okay. As long as you're not intentionally harming people, as long as you're not, you know, intentionally going out of bounds all the time, you're going to be okay. If you're constantly trying to cheat the system, the system will at some point smack you back. It's just, right. it's, it's just the way it is. It's, it's yeah. a little playground we all make. It. So yeah. another, another concept that I, I like to discuss is the mental diet. Um, Neville emphasized, and we're, we're living in an age where it's hyper, you know, we're, Everybody wants our attention. You talk about it with marketing. We have a political campaigns going on. It's going to be in, in every every radio station. So clearly that stuff, the news we're getting everywhere, is influencing our state. And so uh, th- once we come to this awareness, do you have techniques, tools, tricks that um, for how you access outside information? Um, do you take a mental, do you listen to the news? How do you? Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, few things. One, Goddard talks about being careful about like if it was the 12 prophets or 12 disciples or whatever mm-hmm. that chapter, but he talks about kind of what you allow yourself to listen to. Mm-hmm. And so I am careful about making sure that I try not to listen to things that are going to affect me emotionally mm-hmm. in a negative way. And so if it's something that I tend to get angry when I watch, I don't watch it anymore. I literally have stopped watching like news or some news anyways. Um, Mm -hmm. there are places that I have found over time that offer me a nice perspective in a way that I can handle and enjoy. And it Mm -hmm. seems to be covering some of the stuff that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Uh, so again, it's one of those things where I try to be very selective about what I view. And the other part of it is for the most part, this is my world, right? So why do I give a crap what other people are thinking about their world or their version of the world? And I realized if I don't pay attention to certain things, I don't have to see those things in my life. And I don't to a large extent. Mm -hmm. So I've also realized that by staying away from a lot of that conventionality, I've actually managed to make my life much more peaceful, tranquil, happy. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately we own our world and we put filters on. I consider it like glasses. We put filters on that have certain polarity blockers. And you put on a good positive set of those or a good neat set of those and you start looking at the world and there could be chaos right in front of you and you don't see it. You just don't see exactly. it. It's cool. So the, the person that says, well, then you're just clueless. You're ignoring this. The, the, these things are important. Says who? Exactly. I mean, clueless. Okay. I mean, people say, <laughs> um, I, I honestly, I, it's funny is ignorance is bliss. And it truly is. If I don't know about something is, is, pity party as I maybe could think about that's really so what are you living under a rock and it's like yeah maybe he is but he doesn't know about it that's right. awesome think of how tarnished our minds are because of some of the crap we know and right and here's a here's an individual that doesn't know about any of that stuff he's just got this happy little cheery world he's been right. living in so yeah. good on you that's awesome I'm sorry we just ruined your world with this horrible stuff right <laughs> right so so the game changer for me the the technique that really I've seen biggest results uh is revision uh, and and it's, it's a wonderful idea. Uh, and as I'm finding, the qu- quicker I try to revise something, it, I have a theory. You mean like on the spot revisions, or are you talking about I'm, things yeah, in the past I'm, that you're it, revising? I'm, I'm starting to, okay, my, my theory is 
we have these different timelines of different possible parallel realities all around us. And if we revise, even if that still happened, it's like we're moving into that general sector of reality where it didn't happen. And so e even if somebody remembers it happening, the influence or effects of it, I'm still in this, I, the more I do it, the more amazing I see these revisions that I've made. I wanted to get your opinion. Obviously you've started to apply revision and what your opinion of it and how it has affected you. So I guess my, my take on revision is a little, um, a little different maybe yeah. than some. Um, so one, I view mistakes I've made in the past as, as, and really I would say probably almost all of them, maybe all of them. I have to maybe think about a couple of them, but I consider the mistakes I've made in the past to be extremely valuable. Exactly. Uh, they hurt and they might've hurt somebody. And I'm certainly not proud of that by any means, but mm -hmm. again, it wasn't something I continued to do. I learned from it. I've learned and become a better human for it. So when the idea of going back and revising any mistakes I've made in the past, I see that as kind of undoing my wisdom. And I see that being right. counterproductive because if something didn't happen, I could no longer know what I know now because of it. Could I? Like I right. had to go through that. I had to experience mm -hmm. the anger it caused that individual or the fact that it literally cost me a relationship. She right. would never see me again because of that tragedy. So right. I learned <laughs> you don't right. do that kind of stuff. You don't hurt people like that. That's not okay. Right. I never did it again. So would I revise that? No, I, I don't. And, I, and I, I know it's frustrating to people because there's a lot of people that look at something they've made in the past and really just don't want to let it be what it is, which is a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, and they want to undo it. So I get it. And I've suggested that, yes, I do from what you're talking about. I do believe there's power to that. I believe you can do that. I know Goddard talks about revising things in the past and the way he kind of describes it is from your present. Once you've revised the past from your present, you take steps towards this new reality. And that I think makes more sense right. from a spiritual standpoint or a life standpoint, because I don't, I just, I don't know. I have a harder time with the, I'm just going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be in a parallel universe. Right. I, I, I just, don't think I, it's, I don't think that's what's happening. But for example, uh, I own a bookstore, so uh, I might have a slow sales day, uh, I, you know, make 400 bucks and I might revise and imagine the day that I, Oh, I made 800 bucks that day. And so I might make 1200 the next day where, where it all averages it. out that I yeah, made yeah, that amount. Yeah. That's the kind of things I'm seeing. And that, yeah, for sure. Revising my current or when I'm having thoughts that are negative. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the best uses of it because you're staying very in your now. It's like a course correction. Even yeah. though I did have that $400 day, I moved into this. Well, you still made that amount. Uh, you know, and, that, and, that's what I'm seeing. That's interesting. And funny you should say that. I don't know. I'm thinking about like relationships for me are probably the place where I would typically revise what happened. Right. Like I said something I shouldn't have and I felt bad. I'll be honest. There was one example. This is horrible. Nah, I probably, yeah, what the hell? I'll give an example. <laughs> um, it upset two people and I felt bad about it, but it was, I still kind of meant what I said. There was a coffee shop I used to work at. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I worked there as a part-time job as I was, especially as I was building up my other side of my life where I actually mm -hmm. made real money. And I always kind of, you know, saw it as sort of a, a job you do not forever. I mean, you can own one. That's kind of cool. And you might even manage one, but you're still kind of limited on your income. You're not going to, you know, right. make a ton of money managing a small coffee shop. So I kind of said, hey, so what's your plans when you finally, you know, get into, you know, get, get into your real job? And that was the <laughs> real job was where I got in trouble. But again, it was one of those things where after getting done pissing two people off that were working there at the same time. I spent time with it. I revised it. I'm like, no, and I got to understand where they're at in their lives. I mean, it was me at one point, so I get it, but it was like, you're being insensitive to where they're at and you're being a little bit kind of, you know, DB, if you will. Uh, and that's not cool. And so by revising it, I ended up actually kind of smoothing over those relationships and became cool with them again. Now, is it because I revised? Is it because I changed reality? I, you know, I don't know, but it worked right. out to the same effect. So I, know, I definitely we, am we, fond we of doing that. Probably overanalyze it and make it more complicated than it. Something's happening and we don't need to know what it is. It works, right? But it works. Yeah, it I works. We can you. see the results of it. Um, I do think that we have stuff in the past, um, traumas and, and, and th that, that pulls our energy away. And just by revising it, it kind of stops that, like we had a wound and it just keeps on bleeding. We just put a bandaid over it from yeah. the past. And it's like that, the, our loss of energy in the present moment seems to go away. It's like we were subconsciously losing energy from these past events a little bit. 
and maybe by revising that's, maybe that's another like cool kind of healing technique that i mean i just maybe haven't played around with it enough as, yeah. with past stuff um but like i've, I've talked about you know well hoponopono is one that's talked about a lot the one yeah. i talk about a lot is astral letters but um yeah i mean that's the thing is i think when you find a technique that kind of helps you deal with mistakes from the past that maybe you still feel bad about because mm -hmm. i think that's ultimately when it's a problem is if you still feel bad about it, you're still holding on to it rather than kind of letting it go and be right. what it is which is wisdom so yeah, good, good, good point. Good on you. So favorite book by Noble Gardner? My favorite book. Um, who, uh, it's really a toss up between the law and the promise and, um, your faith is your fortune. Yeah. I know he wrote your faith is your fortune way before, which surprised me. Cause I actually, when I went and looked it up, I was like, I'm figuring it was going to be the other direction. I actually thought he was shifting more into the consciousness stuff rather right. than starting with it. But I have found that to be beyond enlightening. Mm -hmm. um, it's caused me to pay a lot of attention to how I'm feeling most of the time. And I realize I do a lot of stuff without noticing I do it. And that's, what's cool. I mean, mm -hmm. because a lot of this is positive programming that I've done over years. Right. And so I'm doing good things, but it's like, no, I'm actually seeing myself do it, which I never really noticed it until uh -huh. being aware of it. And so that for me has been really, really, really cool. Like your faith, uh, the law and the promise, sorry is stuff that I've understood conceptually and, and wisdomly mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, but the promise, not as much, but the, the law for sure. And uh, yeah, so again, those are probably the two, I would say. Perfect. And so favorite lecture outside oh, of that? I honestly haven't probably listened to enough of his lectures. I apologize. Yeah. I mean, the, um, uh, what's the one that the pearls of swine, that was kind of interesting because someone was talking about astrology and all that stuff. Right. Uh, that was, that was actually a pretty cool lecture. And uh the one where he talks about everyone or everything as you pushed out is a pretty cool lecture too. Right. Those are probably the two I've listened to. Well, this has been a genuine joy to speak okay. with you and meet you. And thank you for taking the time on a Saturday to talk with me. So I'm so appreciative. It's so awesome to meet you. I learned so much. Uh, I we could probably talk for hours <laughs> well we should do this again for sure I let's think that for would be sure a, do it a, a again step in the right direction yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. And and i'd like to see us about doing some uh, some live stuff and whatnot. let's do so it let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's do some let's live stuff that. together i think that would be great next question is who's the wizard behind you so um it reminds me of my my master teacher or at least a, a an entity slash personality whatever that uh -huh. i've worked with for a lot of years um Wizard's just a good, or that godlike look is just a very good uh, depiction of He's how I see this individual. He's always over your shoulder watching. <laughs> yeah, I, um, it's funny. Is this was a gift, and it's well, it's really funny with the unicorn thing, by the way, because I, my girlfriend, I, I hit her up. I'm like, hey, if you guys, because she works at a store, I'm like, if you guys have any calendars that didn't sell, I said, I just need a new one. I've got like a, it's like a 2008 calendar that I got people's birthdays written in and stuff. So anyway, she gets me one. Happens to be a unicorn calendar. I was just like, what are the odds, you know? So it made me laugh. <laughs> But um, yeah, this is just, um, it talk, it's, uh, there's a fairy down here. I mean, it just really gets into the, ma yeah, the magic like and the mystery of the way I think life is. And right. there's magic that we can have within our own little domains. When we have to share our worlds with others, a lot of confusion and other things start to come into play. Right. But within your own little private reality, that's where the real very, magic. very positive. I agree. Yeah. So if you haven't subscribed to Dan's channel, you have to. Of course, you probably have. You haven't heard about Dan. I'm so glad you have now accessed his work. Check it out. You, you have daily content that's incredible and, and now that I'm constantly learning. Uh, so thank you so much. And thank you, Brian. This has been awesome. I really appreciate I really this. Appreciate and, and, it. Yeah, if you guys uh, haven't subscribed to Brian from my side of the fence, please. This guy's well, awesome. Thanks, he's got a great energy and he's got some great videos. So get in there and check awesome. him out. See what he's got. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you.